all right it's been a while since i've been out here doing stuff uh that i've recorded check check their bones and uh so what i got to do today is i got to get some stuff put inside the barn i can't let it be sitting out that's what i have the barn for but uh a little change in plan though with the barn or at the garage is uh i'm um probably not gonna get to the floor uh immediately because the weather changed on me and i don't want to do a cold weather cured floor i uh it's just not what i want to do and uh the so then the lift that means if i'm not doing the floor uh, i don't really want to be working in there you know uh per se so i'm not putting the lift in immediately so i think i'm going to shift some funds and attention and get my generator installed which uh i've got a 23 kw generator for the house uh, and i had it all good to go before and just things I don't know, things just sometimes seem to get goofy. So, uh, be that as it may, uh, that's that's a change. So today I got to get the boat and the, maybe a couple of Broncos into the garage and get those out of the weather. So that's what I'm going to be up to today. But I got to go fire the excursion. Let's see if this bugger will start up. Sitting in this, been sitting for a while. Good thing. It's a little slow, a little sluggish, but she fired up. All right, so this put the uh, boat. I'm gonna put the boat in over here. And uh, while the excursion is warming up, I gotta see that boat's a two-inch freaking hitch, which amazes me, but. I know I've got two inch stuff, but uh, it can be a pain in the ass to swap stuff around. But I think I have a multi ball on the excursion. And I think, I don't know what the smaller is. The, the three way ball is on the F 350. And I'm not even sure that thing will start up right now. I mean, it'll kick over, but that thing is always, the 350 has always, always had an issue with cold weather starts. And, uh, and it's the same year, same motor as what's in the excursion. And I've never had a problem in the excursion, plugged in or not plugged in. The 350, will not start unless it's in cold weather unless it's been plugged in uh, and uh, the only thing I can think of is I think in the fuel filter the water separator bowl I noticed I think the I think the excursion has a heater in there preheater for the fuel and uh, for the diesel and I, that, I know that's not in the 350 so I think that's about the only difference man 
But anyway, the 350's a pain to start in cold weather. Excursion's been sitting probably for more than a month. Fired right up. A little clacking and clanging. I think the fuel was cold, the oil was cold, obviously. I mean, it's, it's relative, right? Cold. It's, it's getting cold here for us, which it's, you know, last I looked this morning, before coming out here, it's 27 degrees, which I think is a little bit cold for anybody, but, you know, think of uh, South Dakota, my peeps out there, 27 sometimes can be rather balmy when you're dealing with 10, 10 below, so I guess it's cold is all relative, but for us, it's been relatively cold the last few days. Get this thing uh, rocking and a rolling. portable one up and out. That might have air in it, it's just sitting down in that crack there. I'm gonna bust my ass off on this ice. That's all I need to do. Alright, so I did have big ball and little ball on the excursion. So I have a two inch. So now the question is getting the excursion back into here because I don't want to fall into that. Uh, that would suck. This has got a fuel line. I could drive it out of here, but it's got a broken fuel line on it all of a sudden. So that means get it pulled out of here first, but I don't have anybody here to help me drive it and pull it. So I think what I'm going to do is get the tractor or Bobcat, push this back so I can hook the excursion onto it to get it pulled in. So let's do that. Let's go get a piece of equipment. What do I want to use? Might be easier to use a bucket or I think this might be easier. Should start plugging this thing in. Over there. Got the 
bobcat over here, got the boat pushed out over there, two inch ball on the truck there. So, my big bronco sprung a fuel leak. I'm not sure where it was coming from. Shit in my eyes. <sighs> I had suspicions it was from this fuel pump here. Good lord, son. Right in my eye. So I have two fuel pumps on this thing. One is in the tank and one is this one right here. So I'm not sure where the fuel leak was coming from. I almost have to have somebody turn the ignition and maybe underneath here to see that's what'll have to happen all right I don't have a lot of time to wait around for help Margo and Adam went to the gym and we got places to be this afternoon so I just got to get rolling here so this is going to be a one-man show to get this Bronco in over there. And like I said, can't drive it because I got a fuel leak. And um, I just, it's, I don't think it's going to be feasible for me to try to fix the fuel leak out here just to move it in there. So uh, I'm going to get it situated. I'm letting the boat sit outside as long as I can to let it melt, get the water off, off as much of it as possible. That little, but I gotta get this one out of the way to get the little one in. So that's why I was thinking I might just crank this one off over here, the big Bronco, move it off over here, and uh, snatch onto the little Bronco. Once I get it into here, I could use jacks to maneuver it around, floor jacks. I was kind of hoping I got enough room to get the little Bronco in here in between the big Bronco and the boat. But I'm not going to know that until I get the boat in. Tried to get the boat, I tried to get this boat uh, over this way a bit more. It's over this way some. That, stanchions stick up so but that's that's what I'm gonna try to do and this is what I wanted to avoid this is why I wanted to get this thing done and I would have had it done the fucking floor hadn't have cracked hey so just in time oh there's a girl doggy so that's my next gig. Oh, there's a big boy doggy. Sam, so can you get some Hey, girl doggy. All right. Touch shelves. Watch out, girl doggy.
There's a what? Pretty cool looking. The mummy. Oh, good. <laughs> At least he's dead. It's pretty cool. You gotta throw it at Mario. <laughs> Super freak. Go Whoa, away. Oh, you see all the dust come out of it? You must have ate my poison. Yeah. Good. Dead sons of bitches. You see, he didn't even get to the eating the uh, feet. No. They did that to the black Bronco. Fucking ate up. 1500 three grand worth of seats yeah. each seat was fifteen hundred dollars really yeah huh i'm good i'm fine now just gotta reverse it and pull it tight well what we're gonna do is oh i gotta back the excursion in um well let's go back this thing in first so it's out of our way. Uh, stand, somebody stand behind me. This will be interesting. Okay, it's a neutral. It's a neutral, so. Okay. No brakes.
what I gotta do is I gotta pull them up further. I've gotta pull them up further so he can crank the wheels to, to his to his right so we can you know what I mean? It's like they're trying to back it in. I don't know if they hooked into those things. That's the pain in the ass. Um, just kind of keep them where I have. They'll just slide up off of that. Just crisscross applesauce them. And just hook, hook one onto there. There you go. One onto the other side. Watch your, watch your hands. Okay, hold it. Tell them to go straight for a little bit. tires it's just it's out of the back garage area it's on the ground I think by the black Bronco so Adam what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna push you so you need to crank your wheels Thank you. 
it out or something all right so we got little baby bronco big bronco at least in the garage better than not being in the garage this stuff So that's that's that. Uh, I got some. I got to buy some dollies to get those vehicles moved around in there. That's the next thing. All right, shutting this up here. <laughs> 